Okay, just thought I'd do a video refuting this works righteous devil here. Uh, I've heard about him, seen a couple of his stuff, came across his channel, and he is a true work salvationist. He makes no bones about it. He openly says, you're saved by works. Uh, he's a Roman Catholic. You know, he, also, he, he may not claim to be a Roman Catholic, but he's Roman Catholic in spirit. In the sense of his false gospel is Roman Catholicism. And, you know, I, I say a lot of these guys who are self-righteous, I call them Catholics because they are teaching Roman Catholicism. Whether they reject Catholicism or not, they may not do the whole Mary thing. They may not do the whole, you know, bowing to the saints and bowing to statues. But in terms of their false gospel, their work's righteous. It's Catholicism. And you're going to see this guy who's openly saying, you're saved by your own righteousness and not by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And he's taking scripture out of context, going to scripture for different dispensations, um, because these works salvationists, they always have to go to scriptures that are dispensationally not for Christians, because they, they don't rightly divide the word of truth, like the Bible commands. So I'm going to show you this video about why Jesus Christ, supposedly his righteousness, can't save you. So in other words, you're not saved by Jesus Christ, you're having to save yourself, just like any lost Roman Catholic would. Let's get right into this. Taught within the churches today that because Jesus died on the cross for you, he transfers his righteousness to you and covers you in it. So because of that, when you go on sinning every single day until the day you die... Okay, here, here's a common argument these people like using. Oh, you believe in Peter righteous? You can just go on sinning all you want and still be clothed? No one's saying you can just go on sinning. I've, I've never said that. No one's saying you can just go on sinning. What we're saying, though, is that when you're clothed by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, it's Jesus Christ saves you, you don't save yourself. That's what we're saying. We're not condoning sin, and we're not, those who believe in imputed righteousness, we're not condoning sin. We're just saying you don't save yourself by your own righteousness. Because self-righteousness is a sign of a Pharisee. And it's, it's what Satan had in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. Satan was self-righteous. So self-righteousness, the kind this guy has, is satanic. That's why I call this guy a devil, because he's trying to earn God. his way to heaven. Sorry about that. He's trying to earn his way to heaven by his own righteousness, which is filthy rags, his own righteousness, instead of trusting in Jesus Christ and his righteousness. That's why I call him a devil. When you stand before God on judgment, he doesn't see you sinning every day till the day you die. All he sees is the righteousness of Jesus Christ covering you. Uh, that's what the Bible teaches. You know, you can't earn your way to heaven. Paul talks about, you know, in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 58, talking about the rapture, he says that we get an incorruptible body. So our bodies are corruptible right now. We're sinful. We have to be clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We can't save ourselves. Like this Roman Catholic devil here is trying to say. But I actually found something here today that I think is very interesting. Oh, I also mentioned too, he doesn't use a King James, he uses, a moder he uses modern versions, so what do you expect? And it gives a different point of view than what's commonly taught. In Proverbs 11, verses 5 through 6, it says... Okay, first problem. Uh, Proverbs is can be used for instruction in righteousness, but it's not doctrinally written to a Christian. In terms of salvation, it's not for Christians today. The Old Testament is primarily doing, dealing with the Jewish people. But these work salvation heretics, they always have to run back to the Old Testament, you know, when, when dealing with the nations and that kind of stuff. And again, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That's 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. I don't deny that. And it can be used for instruction in righteousness. But when it comes to our gospel, we don't go back to the Old Testament. When it comes to saying, how, what must I do to be saved? You don't go back to the Old Testament. So already off to a bad start. This is not dispensationally you know, for Christian salvation today. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. So whose righteousness is going to deliver you? It's your righteousness, the righteous... He's self-righteous. See, it's your righteous, righteousness that saves you. This is self-righteous. This is a true person who's self-righteous. And also problem too, with going back to Proverbs, this was before the sacrifice of Jesus Christ happened. And he brings that up. He says, well, you know, how come they weren't just trusting in Jesus? Yeah, because it was before the sacrifice happened, before that perfect sacrifice. You know, it's crazy. Messed up. 
This is what this is the work salvation, the heresy to get yourself into when you're work salvationist. Of the upright shall deliver them. Not someone else's righteousness. That's not what's going to deliver you. And instantly you're probably thinking, well, oh wait, are you saying we don't need Jesus? Are you saying that by your own works you're going to be saved? Because I know there's going to be people in the comments who are going to be commenting that. Uh, no, duh. You're openly saying that you have to save yourself by your own righteousness. So no wonder people are going to be accusing you of work salvation because that's what you are. You're a work salvation papist. Not what I'm saying. The fact that's not what you're saying. So wait a second, we're saved by our righteousness, we're saved by our holiness, but then we're not saved by works. Huh? Messed up. Probably the devils inside of them are just messing him up like this. I mean, just the double speak. So you have to save yourself by your righteousness, but you're not saved by works. You know, okay. Messed up. It is is this. If we look at 1 John 3, verse 7, it says, He who does what is right is righteous. If we look at the people... Not even, not even quoting from a King James. Quoting from a modern Vatican perversion. Get a real Bible. Don't use these modern Vatican perversions. Nineveh, in Jonah chapter 3, it was their works that saved them. It was because... Okay, um, again, this is before the sacrifice of Jesus Christ happened, but we're going to see what, what's actually going on in Jonah 3. They turned from their evil way. It says in Jonah chapter 3, read it yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Look at the scriptures yourself. Jonah chapter 3. It says, God saw their works, that they turned from their evil ways, and God gave them mercy. Okay, what's the context? Let's, let's read the context of this. Because these works salvation papists loved, they lo loved to rip scripture out of context. What is going on in context? Jonah chapter 3. In verse 10, this is the verse he quoted. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them, and he did it not. Uh, what was the evil God was going to do to them? Was it salvation? Is this about salvation? No, it's not. Let's go back to verse number 4. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days Nineveh shall be overthrown. Yeah, overthrown. What's going on? It's a judgment against the city, a physical judgment against the city. This is not about salvation in context. And even if it was, it's not for Christians today. This is before the sacrifice of Jesus Christ happened. So they were not saved by the righteous, righteousness of Jesus Christ, contrary to what non-dispensational heretics will say. They were not saved the same way we are today. It's called rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15, which ironically has been taken out of these modern Catholic perversions. He gave them mercy when they turned from their sins and did righteousness. So when you turn from your sins and start doing what's right, but you're totally capable of doing, no one's forcing you to sin. No one's forcing you to think inappropriate thoughts. No one's forcing you to do any of this. See, again, self-righteousness, he's denying basically that we have a sinful flesh, that we have, Christians have a sinful nature. Let me just show you something real quick. Let me just search up that term, sinful flesh. Because self-righteous people, they just can't stand the thought of being a sinner. They, they, they can't stand, they don't want to admit they're a sinner. Romans 8.3, let's see about that. Romans 8.3. For what the law could not do, in that it was made weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous, righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And I'll say, see, you have to walk after the Spirit to, in order for the sin to be cleansed. Um, no, when you walk after the Spirit, it just means you're saved. It doesn't mean you have to continually walk after the Spirit to be saved. Ridiculous. So, your flesh is sinful, obviously. Sinful flesh. It just, they're right there. He sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And I'll show you, you know, 1 Corinthians. Because again, people who are self-righteous, they just can't stand the thought of being a dirty sinner who is saved by the grace of God. They cannot stand that. Because it hurts their pride. 1 Corinthians 51. Here's, this is the point of the rapture, by the way. One of the reasons behind the rapture of the purpose of God rapturing believers. 
1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trump for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall, sorry, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Look at this. For corrupt for the for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall we be brought to pass, saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory, quoting Isaiah twenty five verse eight, the first part there. So what's going on there? Well, right now your flesh is corruptible, your flesh is sinful, and you don't you don't get a sinful basically you don't get a sinless incorruptible body until the rapture. Right now, you can struggle with sin, you can fall into sin. Contrary to what self righteous heretics will try to say. Paul also mentions this, talks about vile body. Mentions that too. Philippians three twenty one, another verse referencing the rapture. I shall start at verse twenty. For our conversation is in heaven, for once we look for the Savior of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking for the Savior, and we're not looking for the Antichrist, like post tribbers will try to say. We're looking for the Savior. That's how it goes. Look at this, verse 21, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his, his glorious body. According to the working thereby, he is able to subdue all things unto himself. We have a vile body. We have a corruptible body. We don't get an uh, incorruptible body until the rapture. Again, self-righteous heretics like this can never, just they just can't, they hate the thought of being a self-righteous, or be, of being a dirty sinner who is saved by the grace of God. It hurts their self-righteousness. It hurts their pride. Continuing. If you turn from your sins and live with integrity, with uprightness, walking in the right way, Jesus removes your sins. He doesn't cover you. So, in other words, you're having to pay for your own sins in order for Jesus to... So, it's not Jesus Christ paid for my sins. It's you're having to basically cleanse your own sins in order for Jesus Christ to take him away. But you're not preaching work salvation, apparently. Okay, this is all works. It's all it's all your righteousness. It's not about God saving me. It's about you saving yourself. Righteousness. He washes away your past and makes you. Oh, whole co common common lie. He washes away your past sins. What is is that? What the Bible says? Only your past sins. Because again, they they want to cleanse themselves, so they have to say, well, only your past sins are forgiven. Okay, let's see about that. Acts 13, 39. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. This guy is trying to justify himself by the law. Which you can't do. But those are, if you believe, you're justified from all things. Uh, Colossians, my notes, Colossians 2, 13. Because there's four scriptures, four verses which talk about all your sins being forgiven. I'm going to go through all four of them. Colossians 2.13 And you, being dead in your sins, in uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together. He quickened. You don't quicken yourself. He quickens you. With him, having forgiven you all trespasses. All. All your trespasses are forgiven. Not just your past sins, like these work salvation Catholic papists. Try to say. Titus 2.14. I shall start at verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior Jesus Christ. Another good verse for the rapture. We're looking for the appearing of Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself unto or purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Notice how he redeems us. We don't redeem ourselves by having to continue in holiness. And of course, first John one seven. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin. Now, the common argument they'll try to deflect is they'll say, well, see, you have to walk in the light in order for that blood to cleanse you of all sin. Let's see about that. Does What does the Bible say about being walking the light? Okay. Let me show you. Here's how you answer them on that. Children of light. 
because they'll try to say we have the walk in the light in order for that blood to cleanse you, which is what he's essentially saying. 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day, ye are not the children of the night, nor of darkness. So how do you walk in the light? You get saved. And then you're already in the light. You don't have to continue to walk in the light to save yourself and have the blood cleanse you of all sin. You're in the light when you're saved, so then the blood cleanses you of all sin. That simple. But again, they, they, they have it twisted to teach their self-righteousness. Let's continue. Holy. But it, if you think that you can sin every single day and that you're still going to remain righteous... It's just not true. We see constantly throughout Proverbs, just read Proverbs, all you're going to see are people who do what is right, are rewarded, and they're saved, and they're protected, and all good comes to them, and those who sin and rebel and do wickedness are punished. So take a look at this passage here in Proverbs 11. It's not Christ's righteousness that delivers you. The righteousness of the upright. Um, of course, it's not Christ's righteousness that forgives you. Uh, duh. Because it was before the sacrifice happened. I mean, very weak argument. Oh, so they were sa they were saved by their self-righteousness back in the Proverbs. It was not, you know, Christ's righteousness. Yeah, no, no kidding. Because it was before Jesus Christ died on the cross. The New Testament did not officially begin until after the death of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. So when you're so when it was before the blood of Jesus Christ, they were not they couldn't have all their sins forgiven by putting their faith in Jesus Christ. There was faith that had to be there, but they had to do works. They had to do animal sacrifices. They had to, you know, live holy. But that again, before Jesus Christ died on the cross, before the perfect sacrifice happened. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. And for this cause, he is a mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. What's going on? Well, they had their sins covered back in the Old Testament, but they were not forgiven. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he forgave the Old Testament saints their sins. That's why they went to Abraham's bosom. That's why there was a resurrection of Old Testament saints, because they're down in Abraham's bosom, waiting for that perfect sacrifice. And then once that happened, their sins were forgiven, and they were allowed access to heaven. But it says, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. So when you sinned under the Old Testament, you could do an animal sacrifice to cover your sin, but it would not forgive your sin and wash away your sin. That's why you went to Abraham's bosom. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross, at that point, your sins were forgiven. Uh, that so they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For the testament, for where, the, where a testament is, there must also be the necessity of the, be the death of the testator. Not good at reading on a computer. For a testament is a is a force after men are dead; otherwise, there is no strength at all while a testator liveth. Uh, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. You have to do a blood animal sacrifice to have your sins washed away. Sorry, for covered, not washed away. Jesus Christ was that perfect sacrifice who washed away your sins. So, Proverbs was before Jesus Christ died on the cross. So they were not saved by the righteousness of Jesus Christ back in the Old Testament. I mean, who can't figure this stuff out? It's that simple. Shall deliver them. As 1 John 3, 7 says, He who does what is right is righteous. Just wanted to put this video out here. Um, it's something I came across and wanted to do a video on. I have a few other ideas I wanted to publish, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah. Well, he's a work salvationist devil. Um, here's some scriptures now. Here are scriptures that prove imputed righteousness. That you don't save yourself by your righteousness. It's Jesus Christ who saves you. Romans chapter 4 verses 6 to 11. Here are scriptures they cannot handle. For Romans chapter 4 verse 6 to 11. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh his blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Uh, how was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. He goes down. And he received the sign of circumcision, 
a uh, seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, uh, though they be not circumcised, and that righteousness might be imputed, imputed unto them also. So Abraham, because Abraham was a type of a Christian, basically you're saved because when you when you become a Christian, when you get saved, you're basically now grafted into that Abrahamic covenant through Jesus Christ. So when you get saved, righteousness is imputed to you. Right there, plain and simple. Jump down to verse 21 of my notes. And being fully persuaded that when he had promised, he was also able to he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. For if we for if sorry, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our justification or for our offenses, and raised again for our justification. So righteousness is imputed to you. That simple. For uh, Second Corinthians chapter five, verses nineteen and twenty one. Another good one to use against these guys. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Uh, now then, we are ambassadors for, for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Look at verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It's his righteousness that saved you. You're made the righteousness of, righteousness of God in him, not by your own righteousness. Now here's some scriptures that prove his works-based false gospel is indeed a Catholic false gospel. Of course, everyone knows this one, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. For by grace are you saved through faith in that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of yourselves. It's a gift from God. Romans chapter 11, verse 6 talks about that as well. How grace is a gift from God. You don't have to earn grace by your righteousness. Romans chapter 11, verse 6. And if by grace, then it is, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if, if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. If you're having to work for grace, then it's no more grace. It's not by God's grace anymore. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verses 24 to 26. Sorry, 24 to 28, I think. Being justified freely by His grace through, through, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. And that's the verse I like to say, Well, see, only your past sins are forgiven. They like twisting that verse. To declare, I say that at this time, his righteousness, that he might be the just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. How do you get around that? Where is boasting then? See, when you're saved by works, like Ephesians 2, 8, 9 say, you can boast. Not of works, as any man should boast. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by the law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we, wherefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. If you're saved by works, you can boast. You can be prideful and boast like this little papist, this little Catholic heretic, is doing right here. Some more scriptures. Uh, Philippians 3.9. Uh, where's Philippians 3? Here it is. I'll just go right there. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So how do you obtain the righteousness of Christ? By faith. That's simple. You don't have your own righteousness, which is of the law. And here's a really good one you can use against them. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. Another good verse proving that you don't earn your grace. You don't earn God's grace by works. Uh, sorry, actually it wasn't that. For, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. Sorry. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. It's Jesus Christ who gives you that righteousness. You don't earn it by your works, not according to our works. And of course, 
a really, really good one to use against these guys who are self-righteous. Titus 3, 5. They can't, they can't, they can't, they do not, they can't handle this verse. Look at this. So he says, it's your, righteous, your righteousness that saves you. Let's see what Titus 3, 5 says. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Not by your works of righteousness. You're not saved by that. If you think you're saved by your own righteousness, you're lost. That simple. You're trying to work your way to heaven like this little devil is doing right here. Don't be deceived by these false prophets, these works righteous false prophets. Uh, they are of their father the devil. And again, you can read Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 15. Satan was self-righteous. He wanted to be like the most high, just like this guy is doing. Don't be deceived by these closet Catholic heretics. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.